Yo, listen, Boss is coming all shapes and sizes, and this one is one of my favorite. You can catch her on the new FX docu-series called Hip Hop Uncovered. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Deb Annie's on the line. What up, yo? Hey, sweetie, how are you? Happy New Year. Same to you. I haven't seen you this year yet. Yo, and I feel like I didn't see you much of last year either. That's the thing I hate about COVID. I, like, you know, la less hugs, and you don't get to see the people that you're used to running into all the time. I only see you in trailers. Ah. Uh. But at least we're still here to see each other, period. Indeed. So, like, how has the last 12 months been for you? You been all right? Um, it's been life-changing. It's a lot of things went on. Like, you know, as bad as COVID's been, you know, from the illness and everything else, but it did a, a whole 360 for me. It, it literally gave me time to get into me and to learn who I was. You know what I'm saying? And I've lost myself. What, just doing so much for other people or what? Yeah. yeah. I buried myself so much in others that I left myself just out there. I just left myself. I understand. You know, and I was in a very dark world. So it was very therapeutic. This show was really therapeutic. Is, is Does it feel freeing to be able to tell your stories in ways that you haven't been able to in the past? Because we see you in the reality TV space and, you know, like most things, it gets left to, you know, the editor's room and how they want to cut and create a narrative. But your story is your story. And as many times as we've interacted, like, I, you know, I had no idea you were the oldest out of eight. And, you know, and there was so many also like, you know, parallels there too, that like, wow, you know, I had no idea, but now I get it because I get to learn your, more about your background. And that's because I buried myself and so, I buried myself in me, meaning that the people that I was dealing with, there was a part of them that was me. So I spent years trying to save me through people, if I'm making sense to you. No, I totally get it because you have a, a, a maternal instinct. So you already going like, you know, bring people in and nuzzle them in. That's like one of the last like in-studio conversations I had with you. I was like, yo, you remind me so much of my mom who I had just lost at the time, right? And like, I know the energy. I know the energy. So when you say that, no, it makes complete sense because my mother used to give so much of herself to everybody. And you know what I'm saying? And like, she would be in dark places because of giving so much away. Right. And which is, you know, which is crazy because it's a gift and a curse. I don't know how, I don't know how to not nurture. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of, it's a New York thing too. Like, you know, the people say New Yorkers is hard, but we, we nurture kind of different. It'd be a tough love. No, we do and we take care of you guys. You know what I'm saying? And you know, everything is like, my word means a lot to me. I stand on my word. I die for my word. You know, if I give you my word. If I tell you, you got me, you got me. We, we like Chucky. We like friends to the end. I got you. You know what I I'm do. saying? Everything you got is sacred with me and loyalty is everything with me. Like I grew up on that. It's things that I had to learn. There was things that I had to do. There was no such thing as you not doing this. So you're not going to abide by this. These was rules and regulations in that house. Like whatever goes on in that household stayed in that household. So that's why it never was about me boasting or bragging about anything that I went through or whatever it was. It took me a long time to even accept these things. I had so much embarrassment to a lot of stuff just with my way of thinking, which is so crazy that people don't realize. I used to look at people like they're crazy, like people sitting at a dinner table, having dinner nicely as a family. I'm looking at you like you're retarded and while I'm eating, I'm still weaving and bobbing because I'm waiting to see when the punch gonna come across the table. Right. That's what I was you understand what I'm saying? But you can't hold me responsible of things I have no knowledge of. And I look at a lot of people out there that go through a lot of things. And that's why I feel bad for them. I can't put you down. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know your story. You, don't, you know, you don't know my story. You don't know where I come from. Why do we do some of the things that we do? There's reasons behind some of that stuff. Indeed. And now some of us don't know any better. You know what I'm saying? And some of our DNA is just in us and it is what it is. And it's so easy for people to shun you and throw you away and talk down on you and say things against you, opposed to getting to know you and knowing where you come from, 
What's going on with you? You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm not quick to pass judgment on people. I can't do that. I'm no, not. I say, I say that all the time, man, like about how, like, you know, you, you look at, you know, terrorists, and I say this in air quote, like, do you ever ask why terrorists are doing what they're doing? It's all a matter of perspective. You know, if you look at it from their perspective, we're the bad people. You know, it, it's about back. getting an understanding of what forged people for their reality. For a lot of those terrorists, like they lost families in airstrikes that we did and killed civilians. You know what I mean? So, you know, apply that to the street world. It is what it is. But, you know, so many things that I took away from the first episode. Uh, you talked about how your father corrupted you. Oh. And, you know, and, 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 you, and you used to just look at him with nothing but love. He could do no wrong. And then you found out the hard way. Could you expound on that? You know, the craziest thing is my decisions and the choices that I made in men in my life. You know what I'm saying? It was me searching for him the whole while. You know, I, me feeling like I did a disservice to my sons by, the, you know, who I chose to be their father. It wasn't great. You know, I should have been a boy. Like the things that I was doing that's why I'm so freaking aggressive. And, and, I, and there's a part of me that I hate it. I, sometimes I don't like the aggression and, and I can see through people. I can see the crap, but it's all the things that I was introduced to and all the things that I was trained. It's not that I don't think I'm a man. I'm a hundred percent woman, 100, 100% woman. Okay. I don't, I'm far from thinking that I'm a man, but I was trained a certain kind of way and I can't help that. This started, I, I was, as early as me remember is nine years old, eight, eight, nine years old, the things that I was experiencing, the things that I was doing. You no definitely, you, you definitely made dope. a beautiful situation out of what a lot of people would spin into a dark one, but you also, it seems like, you know, based off the stuff I watched, like you had a lot thrown on you, like, you know, being the oldest child, you know, it seemed like you had to step into the maternal role and that nurturing position early. And I guess you got to be firm with seven people under you, right? No, literally, my mother had about 25 people in the house. My mother was worse than me. I think that's where I got it from picking up everybody, bringing them home. We had our cousins. There were so many people in that house that was pathetic. Like, I'm telling you, it used to be four or five of us in a twin bed. I mean, I know the vibes. There was a cousin I used to stay with in Brooklyn in some summers, and yo, all the cousins would be over there. And when you think back on it as an adult, it's like, yo, how did we pull that off? But how it's, it's off what we knew. Together? But wait, heck, let me make you laugh or something, okay? Okay. Did you have pissy cousins? The one cousin that you didn't want to sleep with because, like, you know, you gonna get peed on, R. Kelly style, whether you want to or not. <laughs> I couldn't stand that. Were you yeah. the pissy? You weren't the pissy cousin, were you? No. No, but I would fight them and then I have to get in trouble because I would be mad. Like your pissy self. Or let it be a day that there's no hot water in the house and you gotta boil your water. You don't wanna go to school smelling pissy? No, not at all. Like so, you don't wanna go, you all wet or whatever. Well, you took a bath last night, you only go wash your face and brush your teeth all that. No, I gotta bathe. Like you just, it, <laughs> when I think about that, when I look at that house, that house was humongous to me. It was, that house was so big. But when I go in there today, I look and I say, where did we fit one bathroom? There was one bathroom in the house and downstairs off of the kitchen, there's a little half a bathroom. Let me just explain something to you. A three-year-old cannot go in that bathroom comfortably. How do we even use this bathroom? How do we squeeze into this bathroom to use this tiny, tiny bathroom outside of when somebody was upstairs, and especially one of my brothers, because they take all their clothes off to go to the bathroom <laughs> and have to sit there, and you'd be outside the door, like squeezing, like, oh, come on, get out the bathroom, get out the bathroom. Like when I thought about all of this stuff, but it was therapeutic because as much as I thought about the stuff that I talked about on this show, there was a lot of pain that was associated with a lot of things. I, I was in dark spaces that people just didn't know. And it was crazy that I got to live through things that I forgot all about it. All this baggage that I've been carrying around for so long, I didn't realize that I was carrying so much on me. Okay, well, I buried myself in you so I didn't have to deal with me. 
No, nah, I get that. Now, for those who are just joining us, we're talking to Dev Andy right now. The series is called Hip Hop Uncovered on FX. Now, when you talk about these memories and the things you had to pull up, which which ones hit you the hardest that you just kind of forgot and put them in a box in your mind until it was time to unpack it? It was so many of them had cracked. You know, the, the deaths, um, things that I experienced as a child, there's some things that I'm not gonna talk about, you know, but I've already lived through it vicariously through this. Right. And um, there was things about me that I got to answer myself with and why do you behave this way? Why do you act this way? Why does this click you off? And everything there, everything that I dealt with there was a piece of the stuff that I'm going through now. So there's tons and tons of things because it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest childhood, but it wasn't the worst either. It was good for me at that time because that's what good was for me, if I'm making sense to you. No, I get it. I totally get it. Like, you know, you ever see, you ever have any pets as a kid? Yes. Okay, so I bought I had all the a- animals. That's why I have animals now. Like I had cats and turtles and rabbits and hamsters and everything. So you mentioned the turtle. So with your turtle, did you notice that when you kept your turtle in a smaller cage, it would never grow? Right. And then when you I had took a big it, one. So when you take it out that small cage, all of a sudden it grows because, you know, sometimes you got to change your environment to show how much you've grown and how bigger you were than the situation that you were in. And I think that's why when you look at that house now, it's like, whoa, this was tiny because look at all you've accomplished, Deb. It's, it's hard for me, um, head crack, honestly. It's kind of hard for me to go in there sometimes. There's a lot of things, a lot of things that went on. There was a lot of things for so long that I was so embarrassed about. You, you know what I'm saying? And in ways, even though we were in poverty, but we were really kind of slick hood rich in a way. I don't know if I'm making sense to you because of all of the illegal things that were going on, but yet they weren't illegal to me. Yeah, the, You know what I'm saying? When you told the story about how you thought it was baby powder and it was really yeah. a mountain of heroin, I can relate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I had parents who were doing things and I didn't realize the, the gravity of what, what my parents were doing at the time until like I was a mom, little bit older. Let me tell you, my mom didn't drink, smoke, nothing, didn't party. My mom did nothing. All my mother knew how to do was to be a mother and a, and a wife. That's it. My mom did not, I, I, she didn't do nothing. We taught her everything it is that she know. She didn't know. My mother was so illiterate to so much stuff. And like my dad told her, well, she seen it. He mm-hmm. told her it was baby powder. So, you know, Johnson & Johnson was popping. Like, we was like, what that on? Like, we smelling, going back and forth. We just really, really going through it, you know? I had my little punk. You know you know, little punks used to do to kill the bugs? Oh, like the like the raid sprays kind of? No, they look, they look like incense. In New York, they had those. They look like incense. We usually use the, the, the combat bombs, the ones that, you know, sometimes we throw no, in the stairwell and run. Called, no, these was called punks. And okay. I never forget I had that. We had it rolled up in newspaper like we were smoking. <laughs> oh my God, God bless my heart. I, this is so much. When I just think about the stuff that we were going through and the things that we were experiencing was freaking crazy, you know? It's even crazier when I'm cursing out grown people trying to come to me to get an extra bag. Cause you know, he used to have stuff taped to me, wrapped around me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I would serve them the deuces, you know, and they would come was like, um, Sugar Daddy said, they called my daddy, his name was Sugar Daddy, and my uncle's name was Cheetah Baby, and they would come over to the car and say, Sugar Daddy said, I'd be like, get out of here, like, I already knew you wasn't getting nothing, like, you ain't got no money, you're not handing me no money, you're not doing anything, I already knew these kind of things already, I'm not supposed to know that, I'm not supposed to know that, I'm not supposed to be looking out a doorway for a robbery. I'm not supposed to be happy getting this money in my hand to throw up in school to watch the kids fight over the change. I used to actually like watching that. Watch them. And my daddy used to show me people that it really should have prepared me for everything that I went through now and coming up. And he told me, 
The first day he gave it to me, he said, Deborah, throw it in the air and watch everybody that come. But I want you to pay attention to everything that surrounds you. When I come home, he'd ask me a question of what happened. And I told him what happened. And he said, who was around you? And I said, nobody really, but there were people around me. I was sleeping on it, okay? So he, the next day he told me to do it again. And I went and did it again. But I noticed that there were some people that were coming closer to me each day. They was coming. And so one day when I went out, it was these kids, they tried to get me. They thought they was gonna rob me because I went to the penny candy store, but I disobeyed what he told me. What he told me to do, I didn't do it. And I ended up going to the store and the kids tried to get me for my, my money. Wrong move. You know? You roughed and them it, all up? It was nice, but it was wrong move. <laughs> and it was crazy, but I was so mad because I, my feeling was I was gonna treat all of y'all to this stuff. Why would you try to take something away from me? But yeah. I was still being disobedient. But I still got hit with that to this day. I did the same thing. I went against the vices of what I was supposed to do. Yeah, got so to the code. behind it. So, like, when did you realize that all the stuff that you were doing, as you know, when you were younger, that wasn't normal? Like, when you realized, wow, everyone doesn't live like this. This is just this is rare. I had I had a very good Irish girlfriend. Her name was Patricia Benson, and. This is the time that I ran away from home and um, I used to sneak over Patty's house and be there for dinner, you know, so at least I'm going to eat and let her mother go to bed and I'm going to sleep in there for, you know, like to do stuff. But I watched the normalcy in them, okay? And how they were as a family. And her mom just had Patty and her brother at that time. And there was no dad there, but they were there and they were a family and the things that they did, they watched movies together. It's like crazy stuff. And I was like, looking like, this is some weird stuff. And then Miss Mitty, and Miss Mitty would teach me a lot of stuff. It was this lady, I, another lady I used to run to and I used to run away to her house. An older lady and I would go to her house and she was just sit down and she was just double, you're so smart. You don't have to do these things. And I was looking at her like, what are you talking about? And I said, Miss Minnie, when I grow up, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take care of you and you're gonna be okay. I'm gonna give you back everything you gave me. And she told me, she said, baby, the only thing you could ever do for me is give back what I gave you. But I never understood that. You know when I learned that? When? When I came to Georgia. And what connected that dot? You wanna know when I grew up, for real, for real? When you came to Georgia? When I came to Georgia. That's why I love Georgia so much. Was People it the change of the environment and everything, just- Everything, I was taught something different. I was taught values. I was taught different things when I came. People will say what they want to say, but they don't know Georgia was good to me. It saved my life. It saved my life and it made me whole. It let me know that I could do anything I wanted to do and be anybody I wanted to be. And I could bury that life that that's not who I am. And I could really be the real person that I wanted to be. And I learned that when I came in and worked with the defects and I met these kids and I met this one little girl, I went up against me. And that's when I knew what Miss Mitty was telling me all these years later, overgrown ass woman. All these years later, I learned that. But when I tell you Georgia has been good to me, it puts tears in my eyes when I think about it. I don't think people understand. I wouldn't be on this phone talking to you right now. It's no telling where I would be at in my life right now. And that's just being real. What, you outgrew the cage in which you was, you know, you know, put in, and you know what I'm saying? And then you out here thriving, you know, which brings us to this, you know, I've watched you, you know, with admiration in my eyes as you like navigated a lot of different people's careers and became this powerhouse in business, Deb. And, you know, what are some of the things that you had to overcome being a woman in business? Cause it's, it's grimy. And for a long time, it was exclusively kind of like a man's game in a lot of degrees, but you navigated and you bowed your way through that. And you know, you know what, you know, what's funny here, Kurt, but I don't look at the, the male dominated thing. You have to understand that's all I ran with was men. So I never looked at it like I'm a woman in this and I can't. I felt like I belonged with them. I didn't belong with women because I don't think what was between my legs. I think differently. And I'm not saying all women only hit dogs or holler because, you know, people get offended by certain things that you said. But only hit dogs holler. If it don't apply, let it fly. But women are catty. 
And every time if I get one, they want to be me. Or you think you're me. Or you want to make up these stories and make up these people that who I'm not. The overcoming part for me was, is the love that I've had for these people and how quickly you turned on me. That's the part that hurt it the most, that I trained you. I took puppies and trained them into to vicious animals. You understand? That means that they can cover every anchor of their business of what they're doing. I taught them how to take care of them better than I, I took care of me. You understand? And then you turned around and became leashed by another person. Yeah. That's the deepest part to me, how well you flipped on me. There's not a lot That's of loyalty in this business, man. People, you know, people treat people like ladders a lot. They'll climb as high as they can go, jump to another ladder, but so you can get okay. them high up. And that's fine, because one thing I always said to everybody, okay, this might not be a permanent spot for us, and you might have to move on, and you might have to go, because I might, I might be limited in what I could do. You could go. I don't care about that business. I don't care about that. Don't I can replace the dollar bill. I can't replace you as an individual. That's what was important to me. And every one of them know that I was nurturing to everybody. They they know that. They know that. I loved on them like I gave birth, and that's also was a problem because they weren't my children. But I still treated them as though they were mine. And they still are mine to this day. They're my industry babies, still to this day. Now, for, no those, who, for those who may be unaware, Deb, you know, like, you know, you've, uh, you know, raised the likes of Gucci Mane, Waka Flocka, who's your son, uh, Nicki Minaj. Uh, I've been seeing you on Grow Up Hip Hop with Johnny Blaze. You know, and all Fresh, these people are bona fide like superstars. It's like, even Nicki being a mom now, like, I'm just so proud of her because... I know how much she wanted a child and the things she wanted to do in her career and all of that. I'm loving watching her go through this whole stage of being a mother. You know what I'm saying? Have y'all connected so, recently? Oh, yeah, we, yeah. Good. We're not being, the people say we Let them say that. Okay, that's you know, for, the narrative for a while was like, you know, like for whatever reason y'all weren't talking, but yo, that's great to hear. That's great that's to hear. That's my daughter. Rather they want to look at that or not, that's my industry. I, the one thing that I don't do is I don't clap back at people. I don't think it's any of your business what is going on. And what you have to understand, they don't set the narrative. The minions that surround them set the narrative. You have to, they set all the stories out there. They put them stories there. I'm not going to go back and tell people, oh, I can't take a man just talking about it. I don't care what you think. You can say what you want to say. It's good for me because there's less people in my business. Got you. Now, you, you've tackled a lot of jobs, Deb. No, now, you don't got to tell me that. Okay, you don't now, have to tell me that. how was the job of grandmother going? You know, you're a couple years I, in now. How's that been treating you? Listen to me. I've been a grandmother for quite a while. So, but I love it. I, I, want, a, I want a baby. If I can get a new child every day, I'll be happy. I love children and I love being a mother. That's like the, that's my problem. You know, like all my kids get on me. It's like, you need to live. You need to do stuff. And I don't know how to not be a mother. I don't have know you ever thought about adopting? I have. What's I have. Stopping, what's stopping you? I have. Okay. I, I have, I have, I have, I have kids. I have other kids. I have kids and, and now, you know, I have Trinity. You know, Trinity's 15, 14, the handful. Of, I got Imani. Imani just made 17 yesterday. Okay. So it's like. Cool. I'm, I mean, yo, you, you're killing it and you're doing it with style and class. Now, you know, I know you, you plugged into the culture. Who are you listening to now? Not necessarily people you're managing, but Deb Anthony, who are you listening to right now? Do you know who I fell in love with right now? Who? That's so underrated. Jasmine Sullivan. Jasmine Sullivan? I love her. Was it was it the uh the Super Bowl of uh, you know the halftime? Not the halftime thing, but when it's just the national anthem? I, I was on her before that. Okay. I was on her before that. I can't like here I go again. Because you know, people get offended by everything you say in personalized form or whatever. But if you do, it's okay. That's just on you. Eh? 
You know, only hit dogs holler. Right. I can't do music right now. It's too disrespectful. I can't get with too many of these females right now. It's too disrespectful. They're hurting our children. And it's, it's really tearing me up inside. It's too much. It's too much sex play. It's too much porn. Too mm. much. And our, our young girls are suffering. I, I can't get with a lot of these apps right now, what's going on, that kids are on there and grown people are on there with these babies, allowing them to dance to this music, to do this stuff that should not be there. You know, I was taught, and I still have old fashioned ways, whatever goes on in that bedroom, stay in that bedroom. Now we've just invited in this open sesame and everybody can come in. Everybody can know there's no more mystery about none of us. True. You know, you it's that level one of one upmanship, though. I think everybody tries to outdo the class that came before them. You know what I mean? And I'm sure oh, when why? people see this later in the comments, they'll be like, okay, Deb, you said what you said, but Nicki Minaj, like Nicki Minaj somehow skates down that fine line to where it's not so <laughs> OD over the top. And I said because she was my baby. Mm -hmm. Okay? She was classy with it. Yeah. It's not what she did, it's how she did it. Didn't make any difference with stuff that she said to. She'll tell you, I said stuff to her, mm. but she was classy. Yeah, she, she rocked classy. it. I don't care what nobody thinks, said they can come and hit me with it. She wasn't as raunchy with it. It still was tasteful. Don't listen. Not that it make it right, not that it make it right, but it was still, Listen, it's over the top right now. You know, the funny thing is when you look at the scale of everything, there are some people who couldn't listen to Salt and Pepper because they felt that they were too racy. And when you look back on it, I'm like, yo, what? Yeah, yo, when that happened, it was like, holy crap. Like, yo, did you see what they did? Because you wasn't used to that. This is the thing that I'm saying. They could do what they want to do, but it can't be publicized the way that it's publicized. It has to be a sensor placed on some of this stuff. You have to understand these little babies is running behind the stuff that, that's being said. They're mimicking. The behavior of these girls is still outrageous right now. I mean, I'm even, sorry. Even on the guy side, too, because I can't I was playing some audio today from when Rick Ross did the Tiny Desk concert the other day. And I <laughs> swear, as much as I got my life together, anytime I hear Rick Ross rap, I want to sell drugs. Like he just, he just makes it look, so, he makes it sound so phenomenal. Like it's the greatest feeling in the world. Granted, I know better, but it's just like, people are impressionable. People say music should raise your kids, but guess what? Music does raise your kids. It does. It has a big influence. Like it has a big influence. It, it changes your moods. It do different things for you. You know what I'm saying? I just think that, you know, hip hop has became the wild, wild west. There's no organization in it. Mm -hmm. There's no OGs no more. You know, when, when I came up, there was people we had to answer to. There was respect levels that was there. We got to this point now and nobody want to guide them. I can't beat them down for the stuff that they are doing because they don't have anybody to look up to. You know, then the bad part about it is the management teams that are coming through now, you so scared about losing your freaking money. You don't even want to tell your artists what they're not doing right. You have to understand the branding is the biggest part. It ain't about your music, really. It's being branded. Becoming a household name. You can become a household name, but to how far? How far are you going with this? And you want to be somewhere everywhere. At some point in time, it's time for you to grow up and grow out. And it's time for you to come into something else. But they're so afraid that they're going to lose the $2 over lunch money that they're getting or losing notoriety that they're not honest, but they'll talk behind their back and tell all their business. They'll mm -hmm. tell everything about them, but they're not going to be honest in their face to say what's going on until it's time for you to be dismissed. Now you want to tell all the dog on business. Now I don't respect that. When people come out and start doing that, I don't respect you no more after that. Because you should have did this a long time ago. You knew this stuff was going on before. Why now? Right. You know, Why you now I'm not saying stuff? Yeah. Now you mentioned like, you know, a lot of people don't have OGs anymore showing them the way. Who was the OG that, you know, helped you out when you was first getting started? In music? Yeah. Or just in oh. business, in business in general. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Anybody really ever taught me no business? I believe I, you, I, I believe that. I believe I, you. I'm, I'm, keep, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. 
I always knew how to make money. Hustling is easy. Making money is easy. I needed somebody to show me how to keep it. Mm. I needed to not be the charity case that in charity all day and night long. And what about the rainy days? And what about all that kind of stuff? I'm keeping it 100 with you. And when did you finally learn how to keep it? When I start losing too much. <laughs> you got to learn our way, right? That's right. And it, it wasn't just one time either. Just being real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being real. Hey, that's it is what it is. You know, but I had, as far as music, you know, I'm always shout out Corey Rooney for that. I'm always going to shout out Corey. Like, being about Corey at Soul Convention and Mariah back then and, and Kelly Price and Yo-Yo and Hammer and all those people, it's like, you really learned a lot of, a lot of stuff. Like being back there in those days, those people really wasn't as big as what they are now. Like, you know, when you look at them, to me then, they was like ordinary people. We were popping because we was in the streets. We were the celebrities. Makes so sense. I've been doing this stuff for so freaking long. It was pathetic. You know, I used to model, I acted, you know, like the first movie I was supposed to be in was a heroin number of sandwich, but I backed out of it because my leg was too skinny. I didn't want people to see my skinny legs. That's a silly reason to bail out on anything. They could have cried. I, I so. <laughs> but I always been into like a lot of, there's a lot of different things that I was into because I was around a lot of people as a kid. I practically lived at James Brown house, always going over his house. I always was going over there. Count Basie's daughter used to chase me, going to St. Albans Park because we'd be over there teasing her. Like it was just crazy stuff. I always been around people. Like, this has always been a life that I've always been around. So it's not fascinating to me because everybody at the end of the day are human beings. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when all of this is over and the cameras is down, I'm just like everybody else. Snatch the, the wig off my head, go into, you know what I'm saying? Sit down and eat, watch TV. I got to bathe. I got to go to the bathroom like you do. I have to do everything in this. That's reality. That's my reality. That's real. This is just my job, but I'm always a hundred. I don't make pretend on my stuff. I don't play games. I don't know how to play games. I don't even know how, that's why I don't think I can do movies. Cause I don't think I can read the line back to you. That's some people, but some people, they just let them do their thing. And they're like, don't worry about the script. Just get the points. Like I could see you being one of those per, you know, people. Yeah, I can't, passion. I feel fake. I feel fake. If you tell me to do stuff, that's why I always, I just stay away from people because I say what you think. You think and I say it. You well, know what I'm saying? If I ever get my sitcom off the ground, I want you to play my mom and I ain't going to give you no script. Ah, sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like there's just something about, I, I could talk to you for three hours about nothing. Like, you know, I don't know. It's something about your energy. It's it's the, the whole nurturing thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like you should be on TV more. Like there's things I watch Real because you're on them. You know that what they say, right? What? Real recognize real. No matter what people say, they can say all the things they want to say about me, but you don't know me. And I, I want them to know that I don't get upset over what you say because I don't know you either. So who are you to pierce me? You, you know what I'm saying? To say something that you don't know anything about me or somebody set a room up about me or somebody do something. It's really crazy. You know the craziest thing? But somebody stand talking about you to you and don't know that that's you. <laughs> Happens every day, yo. Well, yo, Deb, Anthony, much Thank love you. to you. The series is called Hip Hop Uncovered. You can see it on FX. It pops off on Fridays. You can see it the next day on FX on Hulu. You also got the Growing Up Hip Hop franchise still yes. popping. Are, are you yes. still having fun? Thursday nights, Growing Up Hip Hop, We TV. Okay, so you got you got Thursday and Friday on lock right now. Thursday and Friday on lock. Now. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. 48 Hour good. Friday is what we call it on the morning hustle. Yeah. <laughs> I got my evening hustle going on. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. We your Deb. Much love to you. Thank you for pulling up on us, man. We definitely tuning in. And thank you so much for all you do for the culture, yo. Thank you. Don't forget Thursday and Friday nights. We TV FX on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. We, we are the morning hustle.